All right, we're out here getting ready to fish, looking for some of these post spawners out on ledges. I just want to take a second to show you, you don't have to fish every single spot when you're looking for them. You're going to waste a lot of time. Modern day electronics, you don't have to have some $5,000 unit either. This is a regular Humminbird 997, so fairly affordable compared to a lot that guys have on their boats. You cannot find anything with a $5,000 unit that this one won't find. It finds the same stuff. But um, if you look here on my map, I'll show you. Basically, we got the creek channel over here, and this is a really shallow bar right here, close to the main river. And here's a spur running off of it down to the channel. So if I pull in here to look for fish, you can see I just pulled in here. If I pulled in here to look for fish, I'm gonna kind of show you what you'd be looking for, what they look like, so on and so forth, if there are any here. I like down scan. Everybody kind of has something different. I do jump back and forth from down to side, but um, anyways, I, I like to put down scan right here and um, and my map right here. And, and what I'll try to do is I maybe make two or three little S's right here looking for them. A um, couple little figure eight type deals. You can see I'm getting up on top of the spur right now. Most of the time I use their positioning to tell whether I think they're bass or not. But, show you hopefully gonna show you what some fish look like on here there's a lot of, it's really rough out here today there's a lot of turbulence and stuff in the water I like to keep my sensitivity high though I don't I, I want to see everything even if I get a lot of turbulence a lot of feedback a couple of white bass right there up high in the water the bass I mean there's no way to tell besides knowing kind of how you think they position but um, I look for the bass right on the top of the lip or right on the side of the lip getting ready to go off down in the creek right here on the end of the spur. If there are any around that are bass, I would almost think they would be there. That's just typically, you can see I haven't been looking here already or anything. There we go. Yep. I'll circle back around and look at them again usually and I can tell by my track where I saw them at. Those are perfectly positioned, you know, just like a largemouth bass will be right here. That, that's more like what a biting largemouth looks like, to my, in my opinion, you know, a biter, one that you might can catch. Once you drop off into Neverland, I, I don't know about that. I, I wouldn't have a lot of faith in that. And just spend time out here idling with your electronics. Don't spend so much time casting. I know you come to the lake, you maybe you're all in on one day a week. You wanna, you wanna fish, not look around with your electronics, but I'm telling you, this is how you learn where they live, and this is how you find them. I'm gonna come back around and try to cut this like this. I came off of that hump and we'll come back around and, and get one different look like that. But they're right there and they're not going to tell me I can fish here. I mean, you know, at least give it a shot. If I'm looking for fish, at least I know there are fish down there. There's a slight chance they might not be the right kind, whatever, but at least I know there's some there. We've got a river over here now when we come back down. There are times where they'll only gang up on one little area, kind of like, you know, a mark goes over there, they, it could be where they're hanging out at. I'm just going to cut across this and the X back down that way. Maybe they're all, you know, kind of from there down. It's starting to look more and more like bass because there's less and less fish, really, just to be honest with you. I don't like to idle a hump and see 100 fish. It's usually not a good thing. If that was, you know, I've seen six or eight in one little line there. You gotta remember, you're only looking at a small space. I mean, you're only looking at five or six foot. I don't even know if you're looking at that much, to be honest. This is just a parallel line to where I seen the fish earlier. Sometimes I'll hit the side scan just to, just to get a look out and be sure there's not some big rocks around I need to know about. Right there goes some fish right there. There's one on the bottom, right there's one up high. It's probably the same fish it's reading on both sides. There's another one on the bottom. 
they're really tiny when you, when you start trying to play with your side scans and down scans first thing i tell you to learn is that the fish are really tiny they're they're not you're, you're, you're probably looking for stuff that's way too big i keep my quick set buttons one on map just to navigate run around the lake one on down scan with a map up oh, there the they are there they are that's where i crossed them last time too and then one on side scan. see right here is a lot of rough stuff there's those fish i just seen a minute ago see them right there little small guys are ganged up on some kind of stump right there or something here's some more of them Anyways, that's just a little tip about how to look for them out here. Just get yourself a good map card. Get yourself a decent depth finder. It doesn't have to be $5,000. I mean, just something decent. And get out here and start island around. It's the only way you're going to learn. All right, it's May the 10th. We're out here on Gunnersville. We did a little spooking this morning. Caught some big guys. Now we're uh, we're going to check some of these ledges out. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about when we have a lot of current, which is what we have right now. The dam has been open floodgates open for a couple of weeks now it's just a strong current we're blowing down the river right now when we get that you don't actually want to focus on the ledges out in the current you want to focus on something that's going to knock the current off like this right here this ledge runs right up to this point and that point's knocking the current off of it and creating a seam or an eddy just like you would see when you were growing up as a kid maybe fishing in the river um it, it, they sit in that calm water and wait for bait fish and stuff to wash in out of the swift water. And on Gunnersville, when that happens, I'm talking about like a hundred of them may sit there and wait for it sometimes. So let's get after here on a couple of these spots and see what we can catch. All right, here's what we're gonna do. This is a Strike King 6XD. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. And I'm not here to tell you that's the best plug for the job. It's just one I like to use. Um, the Big Bomber Fat Free Shad works good. DD22 works good. I'm not a big believer that one of them is any better than the other, really. I like the silent plug, so that's why I chose this one. But um, what we're doing here, as I told you before, we got a current scene. The, the river is coming really fast right now. And to my right over here, if I got off the trolling motor, we would just blow down the river. But it's eddied up over here on this side. And there's a couple big rocks laying out here. You might have seen Skeet Reese catch them a few years ago in the Bassmaster event here on these same rocks. The current was running then, too but there's a couple big rocks here. We're gonna put this big plug down there on them. This plug will run about 17, 18 feet deep. If you work on your cast, get the right equipment. I like a PAL 755 crankbait rod. You can get a big long cast out of it to get maximum depth. If you can't throw far, you're not gonna go deep. But anyways, these big rocks are about 10, 12 foot. We're gonna crash into them with this crankbait and see what happens. It ain't magic, folks. Know what you're doing. Small guy, but we caught some big ones in there in the last few days. I know there are big ones here. Just tell me the truth, and I said, sir, it's probably better I don't. 
And I was up on the stand And the judge said, just tell me what happened, man And I said, buddy, it's probably better I don't But since you asked, I was minding my own business At a hundred and five I was county road cruising out Running the blue lights I was on the home stretch I was rounding that last curve Well, I ran out of gas And that's when I learned It's better I don't Believe me, I will. Yeah, I'll get looser than a line on your fishing reel. Debbie, don't do, don't think I won't. Take it all off, turn it all on, get buck wild, hell bent stone. Drunk dial somebody on the phone. Drink too many beers Woo! and drive a Harley home. It's better there I go. don't. He wants his revenge yeah, already. It's better I don't. crankbait out there pull it in the eddy five pounder right there it's a good one we caught like probably 30 35 keepers in like an hour out here and it's not something i mean you know i spend a lot of time out here but if you do the work with your electronics you can catch them too